Hi, this is group 13 formed by Jorge Bulnes, Paola Londono, and Ryan Pennant from Computer Engineering, and Dylan Rivera from Electrical Engineering. Our group is Cerberus, a self-propelled robotic car with voice command and object recognition. There are many robotic devices that are self-driven, for example, the Roomba vacuum designed to collect trash, or the self-driven lawnmower so you don't have to do the work. Many of these devices have been commercialized and have the capacity for path rerouting or obstacle avoidance. Adding a voice command to these self-driven cars is a feature that allows the car to move and take direction from someone speaking to it. However, most of the existing projects are either prototypes or for very expensive and specialized purposes. Our group would like to combine obstacle avoidance on a self-driven car with voice command and object recognition. There are not too many instances of research and current projects involving the combination of these three elements. Being able to combine these features could be the, the beginning of how a visually impaired person sitting in a living room could have a walker left by the main door brought back to him or her or someone that just had surgery could ask a robot to find his or her cell phone and bring it back to the bed. There are many possibilities. Our main goal is to build a functioning self-driven robotic car that can move front, back, left, and right with the capability of following a basic and specific voice command related to directions and that ask about finding a target and locating it while avoiding any fixed obstacle in its path. We must successfully apply machine learning and algorithms to be able to achieve our results. Our basic goals are more specific to the different stages of the project. So first, we want to be able to build a prog a prog and program a robotic car able to move in different directions and recognize obstacles by stopping and avoiding them with the use of a distance sensor. Second, our car should be able to recognize simple voice commands related to directions, for example, move forward, stop, turn left, etc., from a program list. Third, the car will be able to take a voice command to locate a pre programmed object. And fourth, Using a camera, the car will locate the object that was requested to be located. For our stretch goals, first, we would like to be able to build a self-driven robotic car with visual learning navigation technology that can avoid dynamic obstacles in a more complex environment. Second, our team wants to build a self-driven robotic car with mapping techniques, capabilities, able to avoid dynamic obstacles. Also, the car will be able to have a robotic arm designed to grab specific objects the user requests. The object will be communicated in the form of a voice command and the robotic car will be able to look for it in a specific environment. Third, we would like to for the robot to be able to announce the name of the object that has been identified in this form the robot will be using voice or sound as input and output. Now to find our specifications and requirements, first we ask ourselves what will make it a great product. From there we concluded first the cost should be less than 800 because that's the budget originally allowed by our sponsor. Second, it occupies an area of less than 225 square inches, making it easy to move in narrower places. For the camera quality, we wanted a minimum of 1080 because there are fewer image detection errors this way. For the microphone, we want one able to connect to a, at least one of the available voice to text processor to facilitate this part of the project. Regarding the distance sensors, we wanted something able to locate an obstacle at least at at least four feet away. We want to make sure that the robot can turn away from the obstacle when it's one foot away. Finally, we want to keep the car light, less than five pounds. This allows to use cheaper parts and less power.
As you can see, this is our hardware block diagram. This is an important aspect of our project because here we can show how the microcomputer controls every aspect of the robot. You can see that it will control the software, but also the mechanical parts of the, of the project. It controls how the motor drive works, uh, how the wheel track system works, how that's gonna combine with the software, which is gonna be the voice to text and the visual recognition, which we're gonna have. For the software block diagram, this is an important part because we're gonna be using the Yakpad, which is a software by Jetson Nano. This will allow us to integrate the libraries that we need for our robot. And you can see how we have simplified how the, the software part is gonna work. So we're gonna have the libraries algorithm and the programming language controlled by the IDE, which is gonna be done by the simulation. Uh, it's also gonna do the part of the communication and it's gonna have also the integration. Here we have our system design diagram. This is what the car is gonna do. Once everything is, is done, we are gonna uh, provide the actual voice command and then the car is gonna move. If there's an obstacle found in the way, the car is gonna reroute and try to look for the continuous path to look for the uh, object that we're gonna try and set for the robot. Here on the design visualization, here you're gonna see the bottom of the chassis so you can see here where we have the two dc motors on the top of the chassis we're going to have the three ultrasonic sensors the motor drive the power manager and also the batteries for the design visualization on the second level we're going to have the jetson nano and the fan which we think is a appropriate place to put it because it's going to keep a good balance of the robot and on the third and final level, we're gonna have the camera and the microphone taking into consideration that those are the lightest uh, parts of our robot. Besides, we could have easy access to it in case that we need to modify and they don't take that much uh, space in the robot. So our PCB uh, block diagram will be, um, we would have an input connector which we will connect the batteries. We would then go from there to two add mega chips. And from these add mega chips, we would have three sensors. And these three sensors will each have their own connector in the PCB. And then we also have a DC motor drive, which is an L293D chip. And from these chips, we would have some um, two extra connector for the DC motors. So each um, component will have its own connector on the PCB. So it's easier, easier for us to handle. And yeah, so on our, P our PCB design approach, uh, we, the main function our PCB must accomplish is to power on our motors and control our sensors in order to obstacle avoid. We will have three ultrasonic sensors and two motors connected to it. And our PCB has a power stage with our main source being two 3.7 volt lithium ion batteries. Then we will go through our circuit powering two L mega chips, and these will control our sensors and send commands to measure, measure distance. This will be connected to a DC motor drive L293D chip that will be connected to our DC motors. Now I will show um, what we have for our PCB design. And for this, we, uh, we use Altium Designer. We use Altium Designer because uh, this is a PCB and electronic design autom automation software package for print and circuit boards, and which is easy and effective to use in, in the time I've used it. It's um, pretty straightforward. Um, to make sure the connections are correct, we use Altium to validate schematic and make sure there are no technical errors. And also we have simulated the connections with the code of the actual components. So um, basically our PCB will go through three stages, which are the power stage. And the power stage will be controlled by, by some integrated circuit operational amplifier and integrated circuit voltage regulators. The next stage will be the sensing stage. The sensing stage will be controlled by two add mega chips. 
which will handle the code. And the last stage will be the DC motor stage, which will be controlled by the L293 D chip. The most significant component decision in our PCB are of course the add mega chips and the L293D chip because they are in charge of the most important functions in our circuit. For the significant component decisions, we have two main candidates at the top of our list, we, which was the Jabun Jetson Nano and the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. They are both the four gigabyte developer kit version. However, we end up choosing the Jabun Jetson Nano because the price difference was significant. We actually found out that the actual price for the Yahoo Netso Nano was $200 compared to the $470 for the NVIDIA Netso Nano. They do the exact same thing when it comes to the camera, to the USB, video, storage, memory, CPU, and GPU. One of the small differences that it has is actually uh, that the NVIDIA Netso Nano has an SD card, whereas the Yahoo Netso Nano has a 16 gigabyte eMMC included already. Now for the for the microphone, we actually had the Omai Microarray and the XBF 3000 Red Speaker. They basically do the exact same thing with the difference that the Omai has seven microphones, whereas the XBF 3000 has only four supported microphones. It's actually an important decision that we chose that the uh, XBF 3000 was the way to go because of the price point, which was $64 compared to $105 for the OMA 8 array. And this was something that we thought it was correct since although we went for the middle, uh, for the middle option, which was the XBF 3000, it was enough for the things that we wanted to do in our project. When we come to the actual microfo microphones, we actually have the Arducam 8 megapixels IMX 179 and the RDCAM 1080p IMX 291. One of the important decisions that we took right here was that they both were for a project. The difference was the price. On the IMX 179, the price was $61 and the IMX 291 was $48. Uh, when it comes to the full view, the IMX 291 has 160 degree field view compared to the uh, IMX 179, which has uh, a 150 degree view angle. It was a uh, easy choice just to go for the RDCAM. For the significant design decisions, we want to have a wheel that's able to rotate 360 degrees without constant pivoting. We also have a pre trained English language that is gonna be implemented in our libraries. We want to also include a Spanish uh, library so we can have multi-languages within the robot. And we are including the three HCSR04 sensors on the vehicle, which is gonna have a pretty wide field view angle. There are many constraints when it comes to our project. Some of these are in economic, environmental, social, political, ethical, health and safety, manufacturability, time sustainability. One of the two of the most important ones for our project are will be the economic constraint because we uh, tend to use products that maybe are cheaper and less efficient than others that will be more expensive. And then another constraint, an important constraint for us will be time because we need to communicate well between each other and organize our time so we can balance our work effectively. For standards, we are focusing on the two main standards, which are related standards and safety standards. For the related standards, we are focusing on the universal serial bus, the impact of the USB on the design, the camera serial interface, and the impact of the CSI on the design. This is important since we need to take into consideration the impact of the USB on our project, uh, the camera serial interface, which is a communication protocol. We, we also need to uh, target the, lar the largest impact of the CSI on a project, which, which will be the steady communication between the camera and the microcontroller. For the safety standard, we had to focus on the braking system, the awareness of the very devices, 
the audible and visible warning system and control devices. We need, we need to make sure that the braking system works and in case that if it fails, we need to have a button or a system in which we're gonna make sure that the robot is gonna stop. We also need to take into consideration the people that may come across the robot and the robot should stop or reroute in order to keep the, the people safety and the robot, the robot safety. It needs to have an audible and visible warning system, which is gonna make sure that people can see it. And when it comes to the control devices, we try to follow the OSHA rules that has the 12 points to consider, which we need to make sure that the robot is visible, that we have a control panel that is outside of the robot, that has a separate brake in case that it locks and we need to stop the robot, and it needs to have the power that confirms to the specifications. So for our project successes, first and foremost, I'd like to highlight the importance of a well-designed project. It really lays the foundation for a successful project outcome and it enables us to achieve our goals efficiently. In this project, we really took the time to carefully plan out each stage of development and we considered all necessary factors such as our resources, our timeline, and our budget. As a result, so far, designing and implementing the vehicle portion of the robot has been very successful. We've been able to meet all of our goals to this point within our specified time and budget constraints. The project design has also allowed us to efficiently manage our resources, ensuring that we're making the most of what's available to use. We've also begun working with TensorFlow, getting that environment set up, and that has been a critical part of the project. This involves installing and configuring all of our necessary software tools, libraries, and dependencies. Right now, we've actually been able to work with models that have been pre-configured with voice and object recognition, and we've begun figuring out how to model our own. So for our project difficulties, getting the Jetson Nano microcontroller to function properly has been kind of difficult, but we've overcome that. This is because the Jetson Nano operates on a Linux-based operating system, and in our group, we all have Windows and Mac computers. So this caused some issue with formatting the memory on the controller itself to get it to boot on its own. We've also been having minor issues getting the software to function on the controller, but we've been actively seeking solutions for this, and we have begun great, making great progress to move forward extensively. In terms of the project budgeting and finances, we were given our budget by our ECE department here at UCF. All of the parts we needed thus far have been covered by this budget with prior approval. Here are our current expenses. We had anticipated that the microcontroller could have been closer to $70 or $80, but due to the recent shortage of chips and microcontrollers altogether, that price has inflated to $200. We have received nearly every part that we ordered. We are just waiting on the battery charger. There are multiples of some components here, though. That's just due to the nature of testing, because there could be faults with specific components. For our current progress, this is what the vehicle looks like in its current state. The motors and sensors are connected to the board, as well as the wheels being attached to the motor drive. They have been extensively tested to make sure each component is working properly, and we have begun slowly implementing software to test the capabilities of these parts. Alongside this, we have our simulation software that is being useful to test our pin connections to the Arduino, so we can develop initial testing code. Right now, this chart shows our progress on the pro or current progress on the project as a whole. And this slide shows our current work distribution. Dylan and Paola have been dealing with the physical and embedded side of the project mostly. Jorge and I have been dealing with more of the software aspect. Dylan has been specializing in the PCB. Paola has been working with the sensors. I've been dealing with the image processing and Jorge has been working on the voice to text capabilities. We should have our PCB complete by the end of this week, and then we're going to begin more extensively testing our code and for our hardware and our software. After that, we will be putting all of our parts together so that we can complete our midterm demo. After that, we will be taking all of the input we receive and perfecting our hardware and software for the uh, final project demonstration. And here are our references.